Amen. Amen. We are not going to belabor the time. We thank you for being here with us. We have already given you the text and the text from which we will preach today. If you would turn your attention to the book of Psalms, to Psalm number 119. Yes. Psalm number 119. We're going to look at the first eight verses of this announced text. Psalm number 119, verses 1 through 8. I want to ask you to please stand out of God's word as it's read in your presence. We will be reading from the King James Version of the Bible, Psalm number 119. Somebody say amen. 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 If you have the King James Version of the Bible in your presence, these words will be staring right back at you. It says, Blessed are the undefiled. Yes, in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Yes, Blessed are they that keep his testimony yes, and seek him with a whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Yes, Thou hast commanded us mm -hmm. to keep thy precepts yes, diligently. Yeah. Oh, that my ways were direct to keep thy statutes. Yes, then, 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 shall I not be ashamed yes, when I have respect unto all thy commandments. Yes. I yes. will praise thee yes, sir. with uprightness of heart yes. when I shall have learned thy righteous Judge. Yes. Verse 8, we stop here. Mm -hmm. I will keep yes. thy yes. statutes. I will keep uh, yes. thy yes. statutes. Yes. Oh, forsake me not yes. utterly. So read it the word of God to the people of God. Gracious and eternal yes. God our Father, yes. we stand to say yes. Yes, yes. yes to your will. Yes. Yes. yes to your word. Yes. And yes to your way. Yes. Lord, I pray that someone comes here and opens up their heart to be receptive to you today. Yes. I pray, oh God, that we come and allow the spirit of the living God to fall fresh upon us, oh God. Yeah. I pray, oh God, that someone leaves here a changed man, woman, boy or girl. Yeah. I pray, oh God, that we would be still yeah. and hear what thus saith the Lord. Yeah. I pray, oh God, that there is a pathway through our ear canals, that your word may find its yeah. way to our heart, yeah. that we may be yeah. obedient to you, oh God. Yes. I pray for the sick and shut-in across this land and country. I pray for the members of Zion Hill who yeah, may have grown yeah, complacent. Yeah. I pray, oh God, that you will stir up the gift, oh God, that we may be more attentive and accountable, more aware and more acknowledgeable yeah, to yeah. what thus saith the Lord. Yeah. Now, Lord, I yield myself to you. Yeah. Remove from me the concerns of my household. Yeah. Remove from me the concerns of this confused yeah. world, oh God. Yeah. And even the concerns of this confused body. Yeah, yeah. Use me to your glory to tell the gospel story. That someone may leave here and say, did not my heart burn as I heard the word of heaven. Yeah. Lord, now we stand and declare that the oh, grass yes, will yes, sir. the flower will fade. Yes, but the word of God is word. eternal and everlasting. Yes, sir, amen. 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 And amen. amen. We want to thank you all for assembling yourselves here today. We just want to tell you thank you. We pray for some of our membership that are yeah. traveling and then those who just have not made God a priority on this. My God, my God. I want to thank those of you who are joining us virtually. Yeah. We count it all joy to be in yeah, your presence. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want to share with you that that most are probably aware that this Psalm number 119 is the longest chapter yeah, yeah. in the yes. Bible. Uh -huh. yeah. it, it, it is compiled of uh, uh, Akuna Matana, 176 verses of Scripture. It's the longest of all 
the chapters of Scripture. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the entire song, with the exception of probably a couple of verses, offer praise to God because yeah. of His Word. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. It offers praise yeah. to God because of his word. Am I clear? Yes, sir. The, the, the psalmist is telling God, I praise you. I love you because yeah. of his word. Uh -huh. uh, 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 I, I want to say he is a devoted psalmist. It is a devoted believer that loves God and his word. Yes, sir. The, the introduction in this song it is similar to Psalm number one. Yes. You, you, you know what it says, blessed is the man who walketh yes, not in the counsel yes, of the ungodly. Yes, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yes, and it says, nor standeth in the way of sinners, yes, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Yes, this 119th number of Psalm, it is very similar yes, in the way it opens up. Yes. But not only that, Sister Margaret speak, it is also very similar to what the word that was made flesh said in oh, Matthew 5. Am I clear up in here? You remember, Kimmy, you love that part because it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is I'm the kingdom of God. It went on to say, Blessed are they that mourn. Am I clear? For they shall be, somebody should get happy here, confident. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. I'm trying to help somebody here. And it goes further and says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Huh? It says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. Why? For they shall see God. It says, Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and chase all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Clearly, God is concerned about blessing his people. Am I okay right there? Somebody ought to say, I'm blessed and highly thankful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many commentators think this 119th number of song, uh, they, 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 they struggle with the word blessed. Some want it to mean happy. Uh, but, but if you dig a little deeper, it means complete, perfect, and whole. What he's saying is that this blessed is a little more than your common, ordinary, run-of-the-mill blessed. It is complete, it's perfect, and whole. These are people who are found in the presence of God to be blameless. Huh? I didn't say they didn't do wrong. I said they are found blameless in the presence of God. Jews would say, now unto him who is able. Am I clear? I mean, to, to present you faultless. He didn't say you were. He said, but I have the ability to present you for. Yes. Psalm 119 lifts up and reflects upon the relationship between the word of God, the people of God, and the glory to God. Am I clear? I'm going to give you three angles. I'm gonna, Sister Hodge, I'm going to give you the three points we're going to talk about. The first one is the way of the believer. Am I clear? Say the way of the believer. The second point will be the word for the believer. Y'all yeah, got quiet on that. Uh, the word for the believer. And then third is where there may be a little rub up in here. It's the worship of the believer. The author of this unnamed but most commentators and theologians assign it to David. The, 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 this unnamed song that goes on and on. And I want to suggest to you that there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Somebody say 22. And, 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 and this particular song is broken into eight verses per stanza. Yes, sir. 22 times 8 is 176. If you didn't get nothing else from me today, you got a math quiz. Uh, 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 that's 176. Here's what I'm trying to say, Deacon Huntley. 
If it's 22 letters in the alphabet, well, and each one of these stanzas began with a letter from the Greek alphabet. Right, right. So what I'm saying is that every possible word uh -huh. is yeah. found in the alphabet. Right. Any word you spell, now this is a grammar lesson. You got math, now you get grammar. Right. Any word you spell, you got to use letters. Yes, so if every letter is covered, it means all of your concerns. Y'all oh. listen, y'all come to church and don't even get what you came to do. But what he's saying is, whatever your need is today, I've got it. He's saying, whatever you can spell, I've got it. If you spell broke, B-R-O-K-E, he said, I got it. He said, if you spell sick, S-I-C-K, I got it. If, I could. if you spell lonely, he said, I got it. He said, whatever you need is in the Word. Am I clear? Somebody ought to say he got everything that I need. Big Mama would say he got everything in his hand. The choir used to say he got this, 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 and that, that, that. He's got it all in his hand. I, I want you to understand that as we look at this 119th number of song, that, 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 that God is wanting you to leave here today with the blessed assurance that he's got you. He's All right. Whatever you're going through, son, yeah, he's got you. it's too big for you. Yeah, yeah. You can't hold it. Right. Yeah. It's, it is only made to fit right. in God's hand. Right. Oh, oh, yes, sir. And if it's in God's hand, you ought to be part of God's plan. Yeah. That went past about 25, 30 of y'all up in here. Uh, 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 what I'm trying to say is this. This is a time we live in that we desperately need every letter Absolutely. of the alphabet. Absolutely. We need every letter of God's word. Absolutely. Am I clear? Yeah. This psalmist comes to us this morning with an appeal to you personally that, 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 that here's the tag that I want to hang on this text. Why we need the word. Oh. Why we need the word. Not, 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 not posing it, Sister Janisha, as a question, but you ought to leave here with a declaration. Yeah. You ought to leave here with a decision that you know why you need the word. The word. Uh, it, it, it doesn't do well to come to church and don't leave with what you came for. How many of you go to the grocery store, get a car? Have the money in your pocket, walk through the store and purchase nothing, and leave and still be hungry. That's not intelligent. Why come to the household of faith? God says, I got all what you need. Oh, okay, somebody smarter than me. They say, well, that's the Hebrew. Oh, well, what about this New Testament? That's Old Testament. Well, Reverend Jerry, I like what you have on there. But I heard Jesus sound Alpha and Omega. He said, I got even the Greek alphabet in my hand. He said, whatever you need, I've got it all. Somebody ought to say, he got it all. And, and what he tells me to tell you is this is why we need the word. Somebody's going through a difficult situation. Circumstances are mounting up against you. And I stop to tell you why. We need yeah. word. Uh, th th this is a time that we desperately need the word. Amen. We need to hunger for the word of God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We need a passion for it. We need to cherish the word of God and make it an emphasis of priority in our lives day. Yeah. Many are focused on everything but the Bible. We'll run to the internet to get answers, but God gave you this Bible. He gave us a way that every question we have is answered. And I want to tell you, God's word is the only thing that will remain when this world is consumed. Matthew, write this down, 24 and 35. Write it down. Matthew, put it on, put it on the screen, Sister Hart. Matthew 24 and 35. Mark 13 and 31. Luke 
21 and 33. Say it again real slow. Rewind. Back up. Matthew 24, 35. Mark 13, 31. Luke 21, 33. All of them say the same thing. Three times God says the same thing to his people. He says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. God has said there's an indelible thing. He says, my word shall not return back unto me void. He says, it's going to accomplish what it's set out to do. His word is steadfast and sure. It is ever present and always ready. The Bible said it's like a two-edged sword. Am I clear up in here? We must build our lives upon his word. I want to preach today from the preposition why we need the word, not the question, but you must have the declaration. Why we need the word. When folks show up to you, Sister Chillis, and they confuse, you got to have something in you to help them. Guess what? When I show up to myself and I'm confused, I got to have something in me to take me through. Most of us, problems will take us too, but the word will take me through. Am I clear up in here? Will I go get big mama? She say, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But God declares through the person of Jesus, but my word shall not pass away. Here's the first point that I want to give you. Gave it to you earlier. You should have it written down. Put an asterisk by the way of the believer. Amen. If we spend more time in the word, can I suggest the word will spend more time in us? Amen. She got it. You missed it. If we spend more time in the word, the word will spend more time in us. When, when, when problems come before we cuss them out, we can search out the word and be able to speak life instead of death. We'll be able to walk in the light instead of the darkness. Am I clear? Up in here? The, the way of the believer. You say, well, where was that at in the text? It's in verse 1. It says, blessed are the undefiled in the way. It's right there in your text unless you tore it out. The way of the believer, blessed. Uh, the Lord says, blessed is the way of the believer, yeah. which means it's perfect. How do you know? Because he said the steps oh, of, a of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Yeah. And it says, and he delighted in the way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast out. Huh? Yeah. Guess what it says about your children and grandchildren? David said, I've been young and now I'm old, but never have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. The way of the believer is blessed. Somebody say blessed. blessed. Yes, sir. That's it. I'm glad to be walking in the way. I rejoice that I'm being called out of a life of sin and placed on the straight and narrow pathway of the Lord. I'm all right. We, we may not want to admit it, but every one of us know that we are being tempted on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us know I'm being tempted moment by moment. Somebody know I, I had to rush to get in here because I was tempted not even to come. Am I, am I all right up in here? Somebody know that I got a lot of stuff to do, and if the preacher take too long, I'll give him the Baptist finger and tip out of here. We're being tempted on every side. The enemy knows my weakness, but God has protected me from my wickedness. Am I okay up in here? Somebody, you, you, you always will have some issues, but greater is he that's in me than they that's in the world. Quit letting folk cause you to stumble. Our path is blessed. Yeah. He says, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk 
in the law of the Lord. Yeah. It didn't say walk on the law. Right. Yeah. It says walk in the law. And, and, and see, the law is too much for you and I. Mm. So to be honest, we have to walk in the love of God. Yeah. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Yeah, because the law yeah. is too strong. Yeah. I've done too much wrong. Yes, sir. I have too big of a history. Yes, sir. And the law would walk me down. Yeah. I can't handle justice. Yeah, all right. All right. And if you true, you can't handle justice either. Yeah. But I thank God for mercy. Yes, sir. Am I only one? The path of being blessed is that I have the mercy of God. Yeah. That means I was guilty. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. For my Bible said, all have sinned. Yeah. It comes short of the glory of God. Yes, so you see, but not only, not only did he give me mercy, yes. he gave me grace. Yes. So you see, mercy, mercy, mercy please my grace. I mean, pleads my case, but grace soothes my soul. The path. And then in verse 2, he goes from the past, the path to our persistence. He says, blessed are they that keep. Huh? You can't just get there, you got to stay there. That's the problem. Too many folk can get to church but we can't stay in church because church can't stay in us. We got too many appetites of the world. So, so he talks about the persistent, blessed are they that keep his testimony and that seek him with the whole heart. The psalmist realized that there was a blessing in remaining committed to God. He knew that those who followed the Lord and received his blessing sought after him with their whole heart they would completely be sold yeah. out. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And that's what God wants. He wants to have a place of occupancy in our heart that there is no room for no one else. When you really fall in love, you can tell who you love because they occupy your heart. It's even hard to put them out when they've done wrong. Am I clear? I, 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 uh, even when folk that I love do me wrong, I find myself still loving them. Anybody got folk you love and they've done you wrong? I still love my children. My mama still loved me when I wasn't always a good child. The persistence of it all. We must strive to be those who will diligently seek the Lord with our whole heart. The Bible said we must know that God is, yeah. and that he is a rewarder yeah. of those who diligently yeah. huh, yeah. seek him. Yeah. This casual relationship with God needs to come to an end. We're more committed to other folk than to God himself. He says he must be our path and our persistence. Yeah. Hebrews in the 11th chapter says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And now you can say it, I gave you the answer already, and a reward of those who diligently seek him. Sometimes we wonder why we don't have what we are asking for. It's called that casual relationship we want to have with God. If I wasn't in church, I would say some of us want to treat God like a side piece. Most of you don't even want to be a side piece. But we'll treat God, the mighty God of heaven, like a late night side piece. We must be willing to diligently seek God with all of our heart. Yeah. He, the Lord, Elohim, yeah. the El Shaddai God, must be our ultimate desire within our hearts. Yeah. Remember, he is Jehovah Nisi. Yeah. Yeah. He is my banner. Yeah. But not only that, he's Jehovah Raha. Uh -huh. He is my oh, shepherd. Sir. Yeah. He's Jehovah Rapha, calling Sister Hodge. He is my healer. Yeah. 
Y'all ain't up in here yeah. with me. He's Jehovah's sick canoe. Yeah. He's the God of righteousness. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. He's Jehovah Makadesh. He's yeah. the God who sanctifies yeah. me. He's Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. He's the God who provides. Yeah. He's Jehovah Shalom. Yeah. He is my yeah. king. He's not only my past, <laughs> he's my persistent God. But then I look at verse 3 and it says, they also do no iniquity. He's my purifier. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Oh, yeah. Some of us got them look, them units from the center. Yeah. Yeah. And what they're for is to cleanse the air. We got some running up in here. And, and it's to get all the impurities out of the air. And they got a little filter in it. I'm filtered by the blood. Huh? Yeah, when sin had me bound. I'm glad that I was filtered. Anybody up in here purified? If you can say purified, I bet you I'll press on. Amen. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. You want to make sure we know why we need the word. I need this word because it is my path. It is my persistence. It is also my purification. Yeah, Lord. The way of the believer. Why we need the word. And not a word. But I need the word. The word for the believer. Is found in verses 4 through 6. These verses reveal the passion. And the perception. The psalmist has. For the word. Of God. Notice what he says. The, the, uh, the, 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 the word for the believer. That means it is the command. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm going to let that settle yeah. in the room. Because uh -huh. somewhere we put God on too small of a pencil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he does not come to give suggestions. Uh -huh. The Bible is right there in verse 4. If you got the Bible open, you see it. Yeah. Thou hast commanded My us. Uh, yes, sir. The command. God did not give you suggestions. That's the reason we don't come to church. Because that's a suggestion to it. I have folk I love that tell me, I ain't got to go to church. I've heard y'all say, how do I know what's in that Bible is true? How do I know folk ain't messed with it? How can you mess with the word of a sovereign God and he doesn't come to visit? You going to tell me God has power to keep that sun from kissing the earth? That we become incinerated? He has the power to keep the moon at the right distance? That the tide doesn't overflow and he can't put his word together? I don't have a God that that's weak. I don't have a chump God. I have a champion God. I know that his word is right. 2 Timothy 3 and 16 said, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Watch what it said. It is profitable for doctrine. It is for reproof, for correction, for instructions unto righteousness. The command of God is that we obey his word. Yeah. It's right there to keep his precepts diligent. So not only is the word for the believer a command, it, it says in verse 5, Oh, that my ways were directed oh, yes. Oh, yes. to keep thy statute yes. is also a conviction. Yes. Wow. Wow. I'll wait on it. Yes, sir. Anytime you break the law, yeah. you're convicted of a crime. That's yes, right. The Bible says we are directed, we are commanded to keep his word. And when you don't, you are convicted. Yeah. Some of us are locked out because of our behavior. Some of our prayers don't get out of the room because we're convicted. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Do you sense the hunger and desire in the psalmist's voice? He is concerned for the needs of our lives. He wants to ensure that our lives are lived in accordance, in agreement with the word of God. He did not want to live contrary to God's word or his way. 
You, you would have to agree that there is little conviction today. Mm -hmm. Church has compromised God's word to keep my, people in the field. But one day, every man of God who has stood behind this desk yes, right. yes, yes, is going to be responsible yes, right. for what yes, sir. we've yes, said unto you. Yes, right. yes, and he told us in the latter days that there would rise up teachers. That's right. Because the students would have itching ears. Yeah. And they'll teach things to make people happy. Mm. And God told them to teach until the people became whole. That's right. yeah. I want you to understand that there should be a conviction in the yes. heart of the child of God. Yeah. Some of us have grown up long enough now that we regret hurting our parents. Yeah. Anybody yeah. up in here with yeah. me? Wish you yeah. did better and obeyed yeah. mom and them better. Yeah. I wish I did some of the things they told me to do. I've grown. I, 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 I'm convicted by my own behavior. I don't need a courtroom to show up. And that's how the child of God should be. When you hear the truth from the word of God, it ought to convict your heart. And guess what he said? If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my faith, turn from their wicked way. He said, then will I hear from heaven. Forgive your sins. Yes, and heal your land. Yes, the, 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 the command should bring the conviction. And, and, and here's what I just gave you. It's in verse 6. Yeah. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respected unto all thy command. The psalmist long for a feeling of complete. Yes, sir. A restoration, a restored, redeemed relationship with God. Am I all right? Yes, he, he, he says and that only comes by the confession. Wow. The command, uh -huh. the conviction. Yes. How do you never leave church with a new confession? Whoa. How do you never come up in here and leave out and go have to call somebody and say, I beg your pardon. I was wrong. I, Lord, forgive me. I've sinned yes. and come short of your glory. Yes, the confession. A lot of folks are struggling in their life because they have not been living according to God's word. But guess what he said? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man heareth me and let me in, I will come in, sup with you and you with me. God is willing to forgive us right here and right now. He is a loving God. How do you know? But my Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life Amen. the command the conviction yes. please child of God somewhere before you leave this earth find a way that you have the confession Amen. because when you lean to your own understanding Mark and speak you get in trouble Amen. twice in the Bible Proverbs 14 and 12 16 and 25, I'm giving y'all some homework because I'm going to get out of here. It lets me know that my best thinking can get me in my worst trouble. Yes, sir. It says, there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are ways of death and destruction. Child God, quit seeking your way and start walking in his way. Please remember Jesus says, I am the way. We must have a confession when we leave church because of the conviction for not following the command. I'm at my third point and I'm on the way out of here. The way of the believer is in verse 1 through 3. The word for the believer verses 4 through 6. Verse 7 where we're going to end this whole thing up. He says, I will praise thee with a righteousness of heart. Ah, yes, sir. When I shall have learned thy righteous judgment. He's saying his love for the word and his desire to fulfill it brought about worship. Yes, sir. The worship for the believer is found in the word. Notice the aspects of worship revealed in the verse. First, he says, I will praise thee. What he said, I'm going to be deliberate with this. Somebody ought to say deliberate. deliberate. Uh, he didn't fall into worship. He came with the intent of worship. Yeah. How many of us get ready, prepared for worship? How many of us were preparing 
to come to worship today. How many of you went to bed on time? Did the things necessary so you were delivered. The psalmist makes a conscious decision to worship and praise the Lord. He worshiped God because he was compelled to. He had pondered on the goodness of the Lord, his word, and it brought him to a strong desire of worship. Yeah. Anybody here got a mind that can look back and it make you want to worship God for what he's already done? Or are you so busy still begging for stuff that you can't thank him for what he's already done? When my soul looks back and wonder how I made it over, how did I get out of the mean streets of Cleveland? How did I get out of the addictive behavior of being a drug addict? How did I get into a loving relationship? My soul looks back and wonder. The deliberate, intentional behavior must show up every once in a while. Every once in a while. Your feet ought to lock up. Your hands ought to go up. Your voice ought to lift up and say thank you to the Lord. I will be delivered. He says, I will praise the Lord. Do I have some I will folk up in here that made a decision that God's been so good to me that I owe him some I will praise. Not that I might pray, but I will praise the Lord. That he looked out for me when mama couldn't help me, when daddy couldn't help me. That the Lord showed up for me. The psalmist say, I will be delivered. And watch what he said, I will praise him. I'm out of here. He said, not only will I be delivered, he said, I will be directed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your praise has to be intentional and directed. You can't run around praising little Johnny and Susie. You better come on. That's it. That's it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's yes, sir. the truth. I told you, we will praise these children. Pray God, I'll be glad when they're able to talk until they start cussing you out. Be praying for them that they learn to walk until they walk all over you. He says, be deliberate and the praise should be directed. The psalmist's praise was not offered unknowingly and without regard. It wasn't a reckless praise, but it was a righteous praise. Somebody ought to have a righteous praise for the Lord. He says, I will praise thee. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. Some of you, your math is not adding up because your praise is not going up. I'll wait for you to catch that. Some of you, God got something for you, but it's on the other side of praise. Some of you, God got something for you. But it's on the other side of praying. Somebody, your prayer will be answered when you learn how to worship the God who holds your future in his hand. The psalmist is saying, I want to direct this to the only wise God. I want to give this to the one who is worthy. You do know Jesus, don't you? He's the one that met the woman on the side of the well. And he tells her about worship. He says, they that worship him must worship him. It's got to be delivered. And they must worship him in spirit and in truth. Am I clear up in here? He says that I will worship you deliberately and I will direct it to you. And watch this. This is my last point. And he says, I will praise thee with the uprightness of heart when I shall have learned the righteous judgment. He says that it will be deliberate. It will be directed. And then he said, I will be delivered. I'm going to hide here with you. He says, when these things happen, I will be delivered. The psalmist knew that his heart had to be in a right relationship to go for God real worship. We come in and make noise, but we haven't watched God make a difference. I want you to understand the way of the believer. The word is for the believer. And the worship is from the believer. He says in verse 8, I will keep thy statutes. Yes, yes, oh, forsake me not utterly. Yeah. This same psalmist would press on in 119 and 11. Yeah. And he said, thy word have I hear in my heart. Yeah. 
that I might not sin against thee. This same psalmist would press on to Psalm 119 in 105. It said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The worship for the believer. Jesus in John 4, but the hour cometh. And now is when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such worship to himself. God is spirit, and they that worship. Lord, must. I'm looking for some must worshipers. Y'all pressing pews. I'm looking for some folk who say I must worship him up in here. How, how we sit down when, when the Lord say you must worship me? Uh, the, the, the believer must worship him. The word for the believer, uh, John 1 said, in the beginning was the word and the word was God. It was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Well, what's the way of the believer? I'm glad you asked. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house. That's where I'm at right now. Uh, many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place, he said, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, you may be also. And whither you go, and we know the way. Thomas says, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. I'm out of here. Because one Friday on a hill called Calvary, when I was lost and didn't have a way home, Jesus, you do know Jesus, Mary, baby boy, he hung, bled, and died. Can you say he died? But he didn't stay dead. Cause early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. If you know he's got power, say power. I dare you to say power. He's got power. He's got the power to heal us today. He's got the power to hold us today. And that power is all in his hands. I want you to know I put it all in his hands. Will you put it in his hands today? Whatever you're going through today, why don't you put it in the hands of the Lord? Because I put it all.